when I caught up with Richard Coborn at Elstree Studios, I took the opportunity to ask him for some examples of particularly interesting shows he'd put on over the years. When you started in the events business, did your clients expect a show business experience? I don't think they were expecting a show business experience. And I remember some of the first shows that we did. Uh, we, we did a, a road show, a series of road shows that was incredibly popular. The brief was we wanted an evening meeting for 30 to 50 people. Uh, it turned out to be so successful that I think our record was 700 people. We, we built a stage with one of these sort of stepped backs and with a subtle lighting change, the set became, looked like the front of a pyramid because the subject we were talking about, diabetes, and I've worked in diabetes since 1991, uh, was actually identified by the Egyptians in 1558 BC. And people walked through this, this winding exhibition that traced the history of diabetes. We had to rent Wembley Conference Centre. We had to rent the NEC. We had to rent the, NE, the SECC. Um, why? Well, because we were putting on a show. How do you attract an audience? I think the best example I can, I can show you is a booth we made for Kellogg, Brown and Root. Now, KBR provided all the life support systems, the tents, the food, the transport, everything else for the troops out in Afghanistan. We had an exhibition booth that was roughly 200 square metres that looked like a forward operating base. Now, a forward operating base is the nasty, gritty end of battle. The people attending that show had all been out there. They all recognised it. I was just happened, luckily, to be watching Breakfast Time one morning and an artist, a war artist, called Arabella Dorman was on and she'd been embedded with the rifles out in Afghanistan and had painted uh, some fantastic pictures. Mm. So I rang her up and said, would you like to exhibit? And so a good quarter of the show, the quarter of our, our booth, was handed over to Arabella to show her fantastic art. We had prints downstairs in the lower value stuff. And then upstairs in, in the much more VIP area, we had the originals. I mean, some of these were worth 10, 15,000 pounds. And people were coming back to the booth to look at this art. Some of the work Arabella does was absolutely sensational. And if anybody bought any work, we uh, gave contributions to suitable military cha uh, charities that KBR matched. And upstairs in the VIP area, at one point, we, I think we had uh, every defense, European defense minister. We certainly had the prime minister. We certainly had most of the chiefs of the general staff because they all wanted to come and see this fantastic art. So it was nothing about KBR. Mm. It was actually engaging the audience. And as you know, you sometimes have to convey one thing to sell something else. And what happened was that the opinion of KBR when we did some some post-event metrics was, was ridiculously high. Everyone thought we'd you know, made up the statistics. But what we were doing is we were thinking from the point of view of the audience. It was an exciting, exciting exhibition booth that on the one hand matched what everybody knew was the hard end of war, but also it showed that KBR understood that actually war is about people. Extraordinary. My, my favourite um, show that we ever did was a five-day show in Lisbon with uh, about a thousand people. We used the Black Eyed Peas theme. We paid the money, you know, we licensed it properly. I got a feeling. But we, we rewrote the words that I got a feeling that this year is going to be a great year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which, which, is, which is fine. But throughout the conference, we used the Black Eyed Peas song. Sometimes the music, sometimes just the, the instrumental version, which is available, sometimes the whole thing. And so people were getting used to it. And Thierry Lorio, who was the um, European director, said, look, we've got to have some, something really big at the end on the final, final evening to, to, to get people enthused. And I just had this crazy idea of getting the London Community Gospel Choir involved. I'm going to do a dreadful French accent now. Uh, Thierry finished off, do you know what, ladies and gentlemen, he said, I think this year is going to be a fantastic year. And with that, we'd secreted members of the London Community Gospel Choir in the audience. But these guys, some of them are sort of fairly large. Some of them are actually very likely to have type 2 diabetes. So it's quite easy to put them mm. in the audience. And if anyone asks somebody, oh, I'm part of the patient group or something like that. And so when uh, Thierry said, I've got a feeling that this year is going to be a great year, 
the lead singer sang up, I got a feeling. And, and you hear on the track, the audience just going, what? And then two more get up, two more get up, two more. And before you know where you are, the audience is just singing, clapping. We had 10 members of the choir there singing a cappella as they walk to the front. And everybody remembers that conference. Everybody remembers the conference that this year is going to be a great year. And everybody was motivated. Well, thanks very much for coming in to talk to us today, Richard. Well, Neville, I enjoyed it too, because sometimes, you know, in talking to you, it actually reminds you of the, the donkey's years that you've been doing this job. But I think above all, it, it, oh, there are empty chairs. I was about to say the audience, and obviously we've... <laughs> yes, they've lost interest. They've lost interest and gone home. But thank you. And a straight one? Oh, wasn't it funny enough? <laughs>